All right, that last video was a great example of where I probably should have just let the video go over 10 minutes and just finish out this example, but I can't help myself. It's, it's ingrained. All right, so um, what I'd done was just replaced this big statement that we'd done multiple times in this line, and I even missed one. So we should do it here as well. Uh, we're using this variable over and over again, and so significantly better from a readability perspective to do it once up here and then once we have it, then use it um, as many times as we want to. Um, and I'll focus a lot during the course on readability and making sure it's it's written in a clear way. I've, you know, for much of my career, had to go in and look at old code and update it for our new update we were writing for software. And um, I, I looked at so much bad code that it's really just changed my perspective on how to write good code that's readable, that makes it easy to upgrade and uh, easy to read. So anyway, I'll focus on that a lot, but I wanted to run through this example. Let's go ahead and save that, compile it, and then rerun this program. We can use a big number, whatever. Let's use 15. And... Um, Anyway, it still works exactly the same. It's just a lot easier to read. All right, so that's that's passing in data and using it. We've talked about arrays. All of this stuff is are things that we're going to use uh, throughout the course. Okay, so what I want to do now then is let's go ahead and, and write a new program. Um, so I'm going to close that one. We're going to reopen Visual Studio, I'll close that command line window as well. And I'm gonna create another new project. And this one, we're still gonna use a console app, C Sharp. And we'll call this more C Sharp Fun. And I'm gonna, same thing, place the solution in the project in the same directory, yes. Next, I'm gonna use .NET 8 again, and then click Create. All right, so we get our same little setup here. Now, the first program I ever wrote in my life was uh, a program in BASIC on the Atari 800. Let's get a picture here of the Atari 800. So it was a, like one of the first video game systems, and uh, it looked a lot like that. We had that when I was a kid. And uh, you plug these little cartridges in it to run it. And one of them was a programming language where you could write stuff. And so my dad sat down with me. I was probably eight years old. And he sat down with me and, and showed me how to write uh, a program. And in those days, it was all there was no object-oriented programming. It was procedural programming. So just line after line after line. And so you'd have line 100, line 200, line 300, line 400. And, and so you'd go in and put the different lines of code in the different lines. And then if you needed to go somewhere, you'd say, go to line 800 and it would execute the code there. And then when you finish that code, you would say go to line 400 and it would jump back in the code and go execute whatever you needed it to do there. It was a really uh, tough, hardcore way to program back in those days. And um, anyway, kind of like a choose your own adventure book. You were flipping to different places uh, you know, as you were uh, trying to execute the code. And so we, my dad sat down with me and we wrote this program and the program said, hi, what's your name? And you would type in to the keyboard here, Spencer. And it would say, hello, Spencer. And that was it. And it took us a little while to write. And I got done, I said, man, that was a lot of work for that little program. Luckily, things have come a long way since then. But what I wanna do is recreate my little program I wrote and so we're gonna get input from the user. So I'm going to do a couple things here. One is I'm going to uh, do the same thing. I'm gonna convert this to a program main style program so that we can see the actual code and we're gonna call multiple classes here. And then I'm gonna get rid of this code inside. So we start with just blank uh, code here. So what we wanna do is first ask the user for input. And so the way that we talk to the user just like we did before, we'll say system.console. But instead of write line, we're going to, or sorry, instead of read line, we're going to write a line. And what we're going to say to the user is, please enter your name. 
All right, it's giving us a little squiggly here at the end. It's telling us we got an error, and the error is we never finished our statement. So just like I mentioned, we want to have a semicolon on the end that says that's the end of the statement. Okay, so now we want to read in the data. So in order to read it, um, I, I say, just like we did in the last one, we're going to do, or sorry, we didn't read in the last one. I do a console dot read line to read in and then in the parentheses I don't put anything because it's just a method I'm calling that's going to go pull the information. I don't need to give it anything but the parentheses indicate to the program that this is a method. If I didn't have parentheses on there it would think it was a variable. And so even if I'm not passing in anything I include parentheses to say this is a method. All right, so it's going to go read the input. I can save this program. I can do the same thing. Tools, command line, developer command prompt. Once I get that open, I'm in the correct folder. I can say csc program.cs, so compile the program.cs file. And then, um, oh, and it's going to give me that same error because I haven't you know, I haven't brought in that system file, so I can just type it out, system.console.readline. Let's do that since we're running at the command line. And I can say, let's compile that program. It compiles it, and then I can run it, program.exe. And it says, please enter your name, and I say Spencer, and it does nothing. And why is it doing nothing? Because I didn't tell it to do anything. So after I get the name, I want to have a line that, that prints out the name. So system console.writeline and I'm going to say hello comma and then concatenate onto that the name but where is the name stored I'm gonna put a semicolon out there at the end where is the name stored it isn't stored anywhere I'm reading the line in but I'm just reading it into nowhere it just drops off into space and so little bit of a problem. I need to store it somewhere. And so this is where variable comes in. I need a place to temporarily store it. So I'm going to go out to memory and, and designate a place for it to be stored. What type of information is this? It's, a, it's words. And so what type are we going to use? Hopefully you're saying and thinking string. So we're going to use a string because it can store characters, many characters. And I'm going to give it a name and I'll call it name. So string name, and then what we're going to do is say equals quote quote. When we set up a variable, if we don't add this equals quote quote, what is in the name variable is a null. And nulls tend to be really bad. Nulls are not blanks. They are absence of data. And so a lot of times when we're doing a loop or something like that and we hit a null, the program just crashes. And we don't want that. We don't mind if it, if it prints out a blank but we don't want it to crash. And so what we do, this is like reserving the space. And then once we have the, the space reserved, we can go in and put something in it. I'm going to go put a blank in it so that it, it, uh, the program won't crash. It'll work. The worst thing that'll happen is it comes up with a blank. And we do this all the time. This is called initializing the variable, putting something in it as a default. And so now that I've got that, I can say, let's take the read line that we're doing and store what we read in the name variable. So what we're setting always goes on the left side of the equal sign, and what we're putting into it always goes on the right side of the equal sign. So we're going to read in that data. It's going to go into this name variable. And then now we can come here and say, hello, and then the name. And if I want to, I could do the same thing with putting that little exclamation point. Just make it exciting on the end. So if I save this and then go back to my command line, uh, compile it, and then run it, then it will say enter your name and I say my name, Spencer, and it says hello Spencer, and that is a recreation of the first program I ever wrote. All right, so hopefully that's fun for you. So what we're going to do is, now that we've got this working, we're going to show you different ways to organize uh, this program in the next video. Spencer out.